Why? How to face an interview? When you go for an interview, if you are good, that becomes a time passport. If you are not good, that becomes a trouble. Problem. You can have understand when you go for an interview, you are going for a job in a specific company. You are going to own that company. When I join here, I am going to say that this is my college. If I have to say this is my college, with that feeling, I must know what is this college about, what are the facilities around, what is that I am going to do there. And in an interview, mostly what is accepted is, there is a chair in which you are going to offer this chair. It may be a professor's chair, lecturer's chair, it may be a class chair, whatever you want. This is the chair meant for. You must see what is my eligibility to sit in that chair. You must also know what is the chair which I am getting. If you know that, then you will prepare for it. If you don't know the chair, you will not prepare for it. So understand what is the requirement. Assume you see that yesterday, uh, last Sunday I had students with me in my home. ECIL advertisement was there for 54 posts. The person who read it, I gave employment news to, to read. So he has written. He closed the employment. Then I asked him which company you are. He said ECIL. How many posts are there? 54. What are the qualifications required? He was an electrical engineer. He said electrical engineer. Only that? Then he said the rest I did not see because I am only concerned about my college. I said first wrong thing. You must know who are all the competitors for you. If you don't know who are the competitors, you will not do that. Then I asked him, what is ECL? He said, I, I don't know. What is ECL? They do electronics. I said, what are the projects which they are into? For which project they have advertised? He has not read it. I opened the advertisement and read. There are many paragraphs before the column saying that you know what is the vacancy there. Many people skip all this and in interview they will ask only. If you see the advertisement very carefully, read thoroughly and I took half an hour for him to explain each word you have to that. Once you know that, you know the, the organization because they explain to the candidate. ECIL is an organization, it's an undertaking under government of India. So many things they write. What for? For the candidate to know about the chair where I am going to sit. And what are the major projects? For what project they are advertising this? What is the job requirement? All that they will write. But people just read how many vacancies, whether my qualification, how much is the salary. And those people become a big failure even if they get enough. And most of the people don't get appointment, they get disappointed. Lokpal bill, sir. Hmm? Lokpal bill. Lokpal bill is not new. Lokpal bill is making people to do their job perfectly. A police have to do their job. I'm sure if Lokpal bill is implemented, as ex-president Kalam said, all our jails will be full. Because all the auto rickshaw fellows who park in their vehicle on the road will have to get arrested. The auto rickshaws will have to be dumped in the police station. The space may not be enough. Because they are not supposed to park. There has to be a parking space. When you have got a tar road, one wheel can be on the tar road. The rest has to be outside. I don't know how many people will park here. You cannot have buddy which is selling vegetables on the road. Because road is not a selling place. You can imagine in India if Lokpal bill comes into practice, what will happen? That's why Abdul Kalam said, if Lokpal bill comes into practice, there will be no space in jail for people to stay. And that's why he is not getting support from left parties. Yes. That's the biggest mistake he said. That's what he said. One mistake he said. So Lokpal is not nothing new. It cannot be implemented in the institutions. I'll tell you when there is a marriage, people block the road and construct a tent there and start doing sadhya. Is it allowed? No. You will see church and mosques, temples you will not see on the center of the road supply. Temples are seen in the center of the road in Kerala. You see in many places. Here I see mosques, maybe some small hut. Roads are for road. Once government requires it has to be demolished. Is it possible in India? No. no. We have ja Jatra going. We have got marriage ceremony happening. Everything happens on the road. Is it possible? We cannot because we are a different society. We are not totally law-oriented, binded people. We dilute. Though the police is very strict, I am sure on Ugadi's earlier day, 
everybody can sit on the road and then sell items. If there is a temple festival, we have got a temple festival in which on the national highway is blocked. Because the God, the dance is in the road itself. You can imagine the road being closed, national highway closed for three hours for a temple festival. No more in the world. This will happen. So we in India, Lokpal is a stupid activity which cannot be implemented totally. A diluted version of Lokpal is possible. We have got Lokpal which is active and today it has become a discussion because of one stupid fellow, Anna Hasri, Hasri, keep on talking, smiling only, who says Genpal bill is more important. People will decide. The people can decide only through electoral method. You have got people elected and put there. If you feel they are not doing their job, you select yourself as a best leader, get elected, go there and make the rules. Because we have got a parliamentary democracy system which are ruled by political parties. If political party is corrupt, our leaders are corrupt, it's our responsibility to make new leaders. And then make the log parliament very active. That's it. Interpersonal relationships. Interpersonal relationship. Interpersonal relationship as social being. We are called social being. Being, being social. We are also called a human being. Therefore, being human. So people have to have interaction at different levels. As a father to a daughter, relationship is different. As a teacher to a student, relationship is different. As student to student, relationship is different. As teachers to teachers or employer to employers, employees to employees. In all these, a system to an individual, individual to individual, relationships are made by human being as individuals, interpersonal relationships. Your character may be good or bad, doesn't matter. The way you behave to people have to be different. I may be a rude person to somebody. I may be a small, smiling person to a small child. Maybe I may not be good to somebody else. Your role is to play different roles in different places. All of us do that. We behave in a style to our parents. We behave in an entirely different style to our friends. So we know how to change our relationship based on situations. With whom? With where? Where I am doing? That's also matters. If you are inside the class, you may have a behavior. Just outside the class, you may have a different behavior. You are inside the house, you may have a behavior. Just outside the house, you may have a different behavior. When at home, you may be fighting with your parents. Assume your parents' friend comes. All on a sudden, you will change your vibe <laughs> and then give a nice smile. You are able to do that. That's what is human being. You can change your face. There are people who don't change their faces, keep everything inside. Those people are there. They are not having good interpersonal relationships. So interpersonal relationship is not don't think that being good to everybody. No. Sometimes the profession gives you a job of doing something. Sometimes the position gives you a way of behaving. Sometimes your relationships gives you a way of doing. Sometimes the place where you are gives you a different style of life. So these all together managing what is called what is interpersonal relationship. Next. Present generation compared with past. Present? Generation compared. Generation. Generation is 20 years. Generation means 20 years. Therefore, your generation, if you are already 20 years, before your birth and your birth is 20 years. You generally have a direct connection between your earlier generation to you because you are seeing. You interact with You interact with your parents. Therefore, there is a direct impact between you and your earlier generation. The way you behave, the dress type which you have, and the code of contact which people have, all that is imbibed directly. There are influences around the people. We have got cultural differences, we have got religious differences, we have got educational differences, we have got urban to rural differences. All these will also influence a generation to generation difference. I'm sure 20 years back. This is 2012. 20 years back, if you come to this college, you will not see people probably sitting with the pants, shirt and churidharana. There may be the old traditional dress. 
how this generation has changed because people started moving from this place abroad. From abroad people started coming to this place. We never had people wearing sarees seven generations back. Hundred years back we never had sarees. People only had dhoti, even ladies had only dhoti. Gents never had shirts. People started imbibing the culture from different generations. Seven generations is what makes a lot of different gender. Three generations down, three generations up, down I am there, the middle. So seven generations are which changes lifestyle, eating pattern. You can see earlier there was no packet foods ever. Generations have changed. Today if you don't cook at home, you will not start. Twenty years back, if you don't cook at home, you will start. Twenty years back, nobody had milk in packets. Today we have milk in packets only. So there are a lot of change in lifestyle, the way of thinking, aspirations in life, and technological development made this generation gaps very short. We are moving very fast. These are the things which generally talks about the generations, from generations to generations. But generally people have got a concept, generation means hundreds and hundreds of years. If you think that we have moved very far from 100 years back to this, maybe you will not see that change in other countries because we have a pre-independent generation, post-independent generation. We had a lot of change because we started moving our country. In some country who are 1000 years old, independent country, they have a different status. Mother Teresa is one lady who has influenced a lot of people in India. She comes from which country? That's a country which was not known to the world. Just because of one lady, one country becomes known. She should have worked there, but no. India is a place where maximum Christianity started spreading very fast in the last few centuries. Calcutta is a place where most of the people landed. Our Britishers landed there and then started ruling the country. Luckily or unluckily, Mother Teresa started jumping onto that place. Luckily or unluckily, Calcutta is the worst city in this country. Very bad. The worst city in the sense, we have got a status for Delhi, we have got a status for Bombay, we have got a status for Chennai and Calcutta should have been almost the same status. But I had opportunity to go to Calcutta and see the governor's house. It's much worse than mine. I don't think no capital country will have this sort of a place. That's because the people are being exploited now for two reasons. Bangladesh is very close to Calcutta. We have got a lot of bordering states. Many people from Bangladesh start migrating. You cannot say no because they are related to each other. Borders are only for namesake, people just travel across. Remember traveling to those areas, we used to get old smuggled goods from different countries come to Bangladesh, from there they will come and pick it up and sell it. In India it doesn't happen like that. These are the problems in Bangladesh. It's during that time, Mother Teresa came there, started working with the slaves, started working with the people there, and she could establish a wonderful rapport with them. That's one part of social service. Religiously, she was very strong. She is a person who had realization. And she is supposed to be getting the status of equivalent to God. So many people doesn't get that. She lived a life so low, up to the level of the people who are with the whole status which she had. She was having a set category problem. That status she had, but she never used anything. She lived for people and India, though she is a foreigner, never considered her as a Two lines, you will see them, they are all down to earth. And no other same religious practicing people, other than those nuns belong to Mother Teresa, may not be that pure and good. Otherwise, I am sure there would have been many more Mother Teresa's in India. We have got a lot of opportunity to do service and People who come from abroad also can do better service in India that is proved by Mother Teresa. And therefore, probably the most well-known lady in India, if you ask, that would have been Mother Teresa. Nobody else. During these centuries, India tourism. India tourism. 
India is a place where we have got a latitude from 4 degree to 40 degree. That means a climate change from north to south is very fast. We have got cultural, spectacular cultural differences we have. Colors are different. It's a vegetation land. Lot of religious practices which are followed for thousands and thousands of years which are not part of any other. When you learn history, you learn about Mesopotamia, you learn about a lot of other countries. But none of them are existing today. There is only one country who is still existing with all the traditions which we had and that's it. Therefore, India has got the attraction from different parts of the other country. One. Within India, we have got a wonderful way of mixing together. Because there is a belief, every South Indian, if you want to get moksha, you have to go to? Kashi. We have to go to? Kashi. Either Himalaya, Kashi. but Kashi. Kashi. That means if South Indian have to get moksha, they have to go to Kashi. Kashi. And you ask the North Indians, if they have to get to moksha, Kashi. they have to come to Ramesh. You can imagine how the connections are made. Therefore, tourism is part of religious practice. I am sure maximum tourism happens in temple visits. Every family goes for temple visits. That is the best tourism. That is spiritual tourism. Every fellow goes to temple. They don't know what for. What for they are going? Because so many people are going there. And you will not see the deity at all. You don't know which is the deity. You ask people who are going to Burla temple today. In Hyderabad, Burla temple is there. You ask, what is the statue there? Many people don't know. They know only Burla. <laughs> we have got different temples, but Burla temple is more of a tourism place than temple. So, visiting different places. We have got variety of things in this world. Up hills, barren land. You go to desert. People go to desert. And you can drive on desert. We have got nice coastal region. Many countries have got nice coast, but they don't have mountain close to coast. We have got mountain close to coast, and we have got traditional knowledge. People come to India not just to see the place, to learn the history. You go to every place, there is history and more of mystery. And that makes India the most tourism oriented place. And I don't think any country where we have got Lacks and lacks of people. You take all South India, Shabarimala is one place, Tirupati is one place, where lacks of people go there. We have got Kumbha Mela. Millions of people. No bird in the world. People have proved that people can stay in such place without having minimum facilities also. So that's part of our tradition, part of our culture. Moving from one place to another place, and visiting places, seeing places, it's a mobile land. Yeah. The financial capital city of India, not capital city of India, Mumbai. Mumbai is traditionally very good because it was a traditional port. The Britishers have taken, though Calcutta was the ruling place, Mumbai was the financial capital port. Mumbai was supposed to be a place where it is given as a dowry to the queen, son. They have gifted that as a land. Mumbai's facility is because it's almost center of India. First. Second one, it has got access to West. We have got East and West. The West is the developed nation. We have got all the Gulf country and all that. So, traditionally, ship was the mode of transportation. Therefore, whenever people came, they reached Mumbai first. Gujarat is a Kach area. Kach, Kach means it's all marshy land. You cannot have port to them. And below that you can come to south. But south is almost dead. There are no land available. And therefore, Bombay had an opportunity of growing fast because Bombay is the center of India. Traditionally, people started coming there and started business. The whole India, if you take Bombay, the Marathi people, Maharashtra people, the Marathwadi's people, all of them were very strong kings. Otherwise, we have got smaller kings who didn't have that much strength. So, having some signature for a trade business between countries 
they have taken lot of initiative. Traditional knowledge was good. People started coming and staying there. And it's almost center of India, therefore climate-wise it is very good. If you go to North India, climate becomes too cold, too hot sometimes. But in South India also similar problem. But Bombay doesn't have these sort of problems. Strategic-wise, military-wise, business-wise, all Bombay has got a lot of wonders. And people are very good. They are so loving. Marathi people are really good. Marwadis are really good. Marathi people are really good. They have got a closeness towards Hindi. Therefore, the language was wonderful. Because of the British who started coming and staying there, they had an advantage of English. If you look at the English standard of the whole India, Marathi, the Bombay people speak good English. And that started as a job opportunity place for most of the two places people used to migrate early. One was Bombay, second was Calcutta. Calcutta was too far for most of the people, but Bombay became very close to most of the people. It's almost the same. That's two reasons. Delhi could have been one of the capital instead of Bombay. But most of the country, we have got a ruling capital and we have got a financial capital. Okay? So this Bombay had an opportunity to even become a ruling capital other than the commercial capital. But the North India have got a wonderful political reasons for making it as a political capital. Otherwise, Bombay has got two opportunities. No, no. Yeah. Natural environment. Therefore, here I have to say there is an unnatural environment. It is there. Most of the experiments are conducted in unnatural environment. One. Second one, unnatural environment is created for growing something which are not grown in those areas. Forget about that portion of the unnatural environment. Talk about natural environment which we have. What is environment? Environment is around to you what is available is environment. The environment in the soil is not very good. Doesn't mean the plants around it, the mentality of people. Maybe the environment in Kodaikanal is very good. For what? You will ask. For some purposes it's important. If you are not going to go there. Uti has got a wonderful environment for some purposes. So each environment means it is the situation which you create mentally. That's one part of it. Natural environment in terms of inhabitants, in terms of greeneries around you. India is one of the best places. There are Switzerland which is a good place. China there are some nice places available about it. Naturally good means there should not be any pollution, no hazardous activity around. Your life has to be safe and secure. Most of the time what happens is the natural feeling which you get is closer to the seashore. We say natural environment, very good, panoramic view. But that is only for a purpose for spending time. That's one part of it. Second part, natural environment for production purposes. The first part I'm discovering, the beauty and seeing and all. Second part is natural environment in true sense means where anything can grow and good make productive. So environment, natural environment in a business place where you can do good business. Hong Kong is naturally a good environment for business people. Because what they do? Import export duties are accepted. So it's a natural environment for business people to get. So what is nature there? The government policies becomes nature. US becomes a good place for people to work. And I is environment for people to work. Why? Because they have got a policy meant for business. They only support the business. In India, we have got a natural environment. For what purpose? Agriculture. No world in the world people can produce this good variety of items. The God gifted environment is only in India. That's why we say India is the place where created by God. Himalayan Samarabhya, Yavad Hindu Sarovaram, Tam Devadarupitam Desham, Hindu Sarabhya Production. The God has created an environment. The rest of the things people are created. We make a place for good for some purpose business or maybe tourism, or maybe for sightseeing, maybe for lovemaking, all that is made separate. 
but God has given you an environment. And that, if you want to call it as natural environment, that's a fantastic thing. And in the whole world, India is the best natural environment. But small pollutions and all doesn't matter. Though we speak not about it, nothing matters because Earth has got its own way of because it's created by God. God knows how to make it. <laughs> Therefore, nothing happens in this world. It is not in our country. Once upon a time, Tibet was naturally very beautiful. But today, Tibet is totally bad. Not because of people polluted. It's a life world which keeps changing its nature. So, as of now, in this generation, this part of South India is the best place. And also, our communication skills. Communication skill development we already covered. So, you must take some other stuff. Utilization of money and resources. Utilization. Utilization of money and resources. Just now we had a topic on this where money is blocked. There are two types of money. One is liquid and That's another it. one is That's solid. It. The solid cash. You That's buy a land that becomes a solid cash for you. Liquid cash is what you have in your bank. Asset is a solid cash where you don't utilize it. So if you don't utilize gold, you buy it and keep it. If everybody buys gold and keep it, will the world grow this? No. Will people do business? No. So liquid cash is what is to be done to generate employment. Assume that Ramesh sir did not have got a college like this in Bogor. And nobody else construct like this. You will have to go to a different place for education, right? So utilization of money for a social cause. That's the best way to utilize. Either your land, if you are not doing agriculture, give it to somebody for doing it. If you are not using your money, give it to somebody for you to utilize it. Give it to government. Putting in bank, investing in shares, investing in mutual funds. All these are part of sharing the burden of the government and development. So, utilization of money as a person, you don't know how to utilize it. Best way to give it to somebody who knows how to utilize it. Otherwise, it becomes a deadlock. Many countries don't develop not because they don't have money. They don't know how to utilize money. As an individual, if you don't know how to utilize money, you may have a large land and you will live starving. You have people who have got large land, but they don't know how to live polish. They just every day cook food and eat food and then sleep with earth. We had old generations like that. But I'm sure in today's world, people are utilizing money and utilizing more in more useless manner also. I'm sure yesterday I was traveling in the city in every alternate shops in the some area that before reaching Upal, you will see motorbikes for sale. Hundreds of underutilized resources in this country. Think when you keep that. Product is available, people are not ready to use it. That's why it is for sale, right? Why? There are people who are rich, they want to keep on changing their mind. And what happens to the old one? It's kept at it. Are they selling it to the lowest cost? No. The mediators will price it and therefore they make a lot of money in between. I think I'm sure the world will become good only when you have got a nice way of selling, buying products. A regularized way of doing it. That's not well happening in India. The land cost changes based on the person who is to approach I can give an advance here, resell it to somebody else and sell it for a higher price and then do registration there. The mediators are heard ruling the country. That's why the utilization doesn't happen, happen the right way. If that doesn't happen, I think there will be a better utilization. Any other topic? Public administration. Public administration. Wonderful topic. The whole India is governed by three activities. One is judiciary. Second one is rule makers, that's our legislation. Third one is administration. The politicians are elected either in parliament or in assembly for making rules. And law infrastructure which we have in the name of court, they are supposed to see that whatever rule they make is implemented perfectly. But who is in between connecting? Administrators. And as they relate to public, because anything is done for public, they have a larger responsibility. I think our biggest drawback in India is the public administrators are not doing their job perfectly. Politicians are doing, 
if they are wrong, responsibility is on public administrators. I am sure no politician can do wrong if the person who is working under him supports him. So when you blame a politician, understand it is not politician but the public administrating officer who is doing cor corruption. Why he has to listen to politicians? He can say no, as per this rule, this cannot happen. I am sure no politician can do corruption. So the first thing what is to be perfected in this country is the public administration people. The police will not do injustice to anybody. He will not listen to a politician. Maximum what will happen? He will get transferred. Let him get transferred. He has to work somewhere else. That's it. He is ready for that. A public officer is always the person who is ruling the country. Not politicians, not people. People can only elect politicians for making the rules. I'm sure the value-oriented generation which is going to come will change a lot of things in this world. Provided the civil servants which are coming to administer this country becomes good. Nice education with good vision, with a good policy in hand, I'm sure India will have got a good public That's why in most of the civil service exams, public administration becomes one of the strong subjects which they choose for taking. There was one suggestion made by Abdul Kalam to take people after the plus two, give them a graduation and post-graduation in public administration and then make them as a years officers, straight, as a channel for writing. That was a wonderful moment, but that has not taken up. IASC and IIT have planned to do that, but I don't think it is getting implemented. So I am sure next few years to come, public administration will become one of the most leading subjects which are opted by people. In Delhi, if you go, you will see people opt for that. In South India, it is less. Because Delhi is the capital where the ruling happens, they have got the habit in by itself. So thank you, thanks. So how many years is this?